Hello, welcome to another Daily Digest video. I'm Ross Miriam. Today I'm continuing my dive into standard, playing a deck built around this card, Grand Warlord Rada. Uh, pretty typical red-green beatdown deck, but has a ton of ways to sink the mana that you get from Rada into productive ends. We got Eternalized Creatures, we got uh, one of my picks for most underrated card right now in standard, and Fight with Fire. Um, we got Cycling Lands and a bunch of other cool stuff, Siege Gang Commander, so... Hopefully we'll get to uh, set up some awesome plays here. Uh, this hand's a keep, but it's awkward because neither of my land enters the battlefield tapped on turn one. But, you know, maybe we'll draw Forest. I think I'll still land our elves on turn two over the Kenra. Oh man, my opponent has land our elves on the play. I don't have an answer to it. Well, we're going to be behind here. But now I get to double spell on turn two with Ovia and Lenore Elves, which is nice. And hopefully find a third land here and Rada on turn three. Well, I didn't find another land. I could Ballista down their Elf, but I think I want to get Mana in play. If I don't draw a land here, then we might kill the Elf. Maybe even if we do, I can play it on two and... Blow up the elf, keeping the blister around. Oh, okay, they didn't cast anything off of that, so that's nice. And this, we have the servos pretty well taken care of. Um, interesting. So now, um, I don't really have anything to do with one mana from playing the Rada. I kind of just want to play Ballista and blow up this Elf, and then we'll figure something out next turn. Yeah, because I, well, the Rod is just not making a big impact. I'm glad they didn't play a uh, spell off that Expertise. We could have fallen really far behind. But instead, we're not in bad shape. We got removal spells for stuff. Hopefully we can set up a Kicked Fight with Fire, and that'll be like a Plague Wind. Earthshaker Kenra is not looking very good against Ram's Expertise. Uh, do I want to trade Ballista for this Branch Walker? Probably. They're going to have a way to manipulate the number of bodies they put into play, pump their team or whatever. So... Just keeping them low on stuff seems good. No block. And... Still don't really have anything to do with mana. But now I could just struggle this Brontodon. I guess I'll do it on their upkeep. No, if they have pump spell then it just gets bigger. Yeah, let's just deal with their thing before I take too much damage. And pass the turn. I promise we'll get this Rada down eventually. Is this a cycle? Yeah. Cycling of Scattered Groves. Lenor L is not very concerned. Huh. Just making two more 1-1s. One I think they'd want to wait on that, because with the Lanner Elves, they can play a kick next turn. And a Ooh, well, that's pretty cool. And yeah, that also seems better than Rada. I promise we'll play Rada eventually. But this definitely helped. There seems like they're setting something up. Either they do have the City's Blessing, if they have like the, the double pumper. They just stack with five three threes here. Angel of Invention. That's pretty good. Hopefully they just put the counters on it. Trying to play around another Ballista. And I just get to fight with fire. Oh, they definitely need to put the counters on it because otherwise it just gets siege ganged. Huh. Interesting. 
Um, I guess maybe, maybe I'm, I actually have to trade off some stuff here because this is an attack for a lot. Um, and if I just play Rada next turn, I only I have four, seven attacking creatures. That only makes seven mana. That'll be too short to fight with fire. Am I supposed to trade off the Siege Gang? That feels kind of weak. Um, uh, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. They're out of... They're out of stuff, and I still have some stuff, so I feel like I should just make some blocks. Uh, and I think the servos are more are better than saplings because they might have the servo lord. Do I trade away the siege gang too? I think if I don't block a siege gang, they're pretty likely to. Uh, kill the goblin instead of the Ovia, and I'm willing to go to six for that to happen. Hmm. This could get hairy here. I've always been a little bit short on this fight with fire. I'm going to be short for a little while longer. They aren't going to deal with Ovia. Interesting. Okay. Another Rada. Hmm. So, let's play it. And I want to leave back a good number of blockers, but I also really want to deal with this angel invention. So I think what that entails is attacking with Llanowar Elves and the Goblin Token and throwing the Goblin at the angel. And if they want to trade a token for the Elf, that's fine. I feel like I've played this game kind of loose, but uh, it doesn't empty, so I don't really have to do anything immediately. I guess letting him block means they just put the angel in front of this. Whereas if I'd done this first, I might get this point through. Yeah, I should have done this before. I don't know, they're just letting it happen. Well, I think that's a mistake for my opponent, but I'll take my free two damage. Sacrifice this goblin. See if they would just want to chump attack and try to get their four damage in. Definitely dead to an anthem. And we're pretty far away from fighting anything with fire. Oh, wow. Well, I'm kind of glad they... Oh, though... Am I just dead? Ugh. Oh. I'm getting a flood warning. It's been raining a lot in Roanoke. Um. Ugh. I'm kind of dead. There's no line that lets me... I guess I can play... Yeah, I can't play Chandra plus play Kenra, because then I'm exactly dead. Um, I... I guess I have to play Kenra, pass, and only block four things, shoot an unlock thing with the Siege Gang. I get to kill... I'd kill th four things then. Uh, and go to one, and I'd have 
just the Rada left, and they'd have two tokens. I mean, I might be able to survive that if they brick. So, yeah, that's the line. Probably played this a little fast and loose. Maybe he was supposed to throw the Siege Gang away to save some life, and then use the fight with fire to deal with the Angel. Okay, go to blocks. Walk like that. And kill this one. Sacrifice a goblin. Sacrifice each gang to its own ability. Please brick. Ooh, that seemed like a brick. Okay. Um, so how do I play this? I think I want to keep the ability to kick a fight with fire. I'm at five lands here. I can go up to seven mana with Chandra, eight from attacking. So I'm only one mana away. So I think I'm just going to Chandra minus on a Sapperling. And hope they don't find a removal spell. But we might. We might be getting there. Yes. Yes. Um, let's add two mana. And eternalize this. That can't block. And... So I'm going to be able to kick it next turn. I think I want to attack just for four so I don't die to a removal spell. Uh, yeah. Green. We might be doing it. Cast this. Now, even if they like draw something big, we have fight with fire. Finally, let's just say a sapling migration or an angel invention. No! No! Uh, walking ballista. Why? Why do you do this to me? Uh. We were so close. So close. Uh, uh, yeah, couldn't beat that one. Could beat almost anything else, I think. But not that one. Um, well, I definitely want more Fight with Fire. And I think I want Sheep Removal. I'm not sure if I want a Braid. I don't think I want this one. Um, I mostly just want to do the really powerful things. They're low on interaction, so defense is, doesn't seem that good. Is Brontodon good? Like they'll probably have enchantments, right? Probably want these Brontodons. Maybe just trim like a Jade Light Ranger. Oh, I, can't, I, I want to cut Earthshaker Kenra, I think. This seems like the, one of the weaker cards in my deck. Let's bring in a couple of braids. Just have some removal in that spot. This card is just so bad against tokens. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be more of a control role. Would like to play first. <sighs> Why can't I throw up terminal land worlds? Uh, still keep, but 
This is why you really want land war elves in enemy color decks so you get the fast land instead of the, having all your dual lands enter tapped on turn one. Yeah, but my opponents just have turn one land war elves all the time. Still can't can't even kill it because I don't have another tap have another tap land. Okay, three drop that doesn't affect the board. I kind of like that. They find a Bronted on, but now, oh man, so really hoping to draw a land there so I could Lannery plus a Braid. I really don't want to just a Braid, but I'm pretty afraid of a uh, thing that makes two three three one ones Rams expertise. So I have to a Braid this land or else that just seems like a recipe to lose to other things. I think I'm just going to try to hit land drops and hope they don't have it. That can go in the graveyard and a mountain. So now we're only one land away from Glorybringer. Ooh, a tapped land. Okay, so no Sram's expertise this turn. That's nice. This might just be a Brontodon. Which is really awkward because we drew two braids and obviously didn't draw a land for Glorybringer. So, how am I supposed to play this? I could play Kenra and get to attack, but that's only a one time thing. I guess I can play Kenra and then a braid the Lanor Elves. That seems good. I could have I could also play Bronched on it and like have a mana up to blow up this growing rights if they had an expertise. But I'm gonna once again hope they don't have that. And Mushu. A braid still better than Earthshaker Kenra would have been. Yeah, there's expertise. Oh, well, this isn't good. They're going to have a lot of mana for a potential walking ballista. That's fine. Okay, now I get to Glorybringer, so that's cool. And we're going to get aggressive. Blow this up. My Brontodon can now blow up that Thopter Arrest and get to explore some more if that's the thing I want to do. But let's hope they just don't have a giant ballista. Have a ton of mana still playing a tap lane there instead of cycling it. Probably means they have three spells in their hand. Which is no bueno. But hopefully I can just sort of stall on the ground and finish them off with this glory bringer. Kinda wish I'd been able to deal one more point. But alas. It was not to be. Hmm. They're thinking pretty hard here. They're one short of being able to play a Ballista for four. That is a reason to play that land, too, if they're holding a Ballista. But if they just played a creature, they'd get that mana, too. Ugh. What do they find off of this? A Thrashing Brontodon. That's fine. So this is going to turn their... Oh no, and my, my, my glory bringer is tapped. They're going to be able to activate this chalet. Uh, next turn. 
So I guess I'm I want to attack with creatures. <laughs> and potentially just abrade the chalet now. And then probably just play Brontodon to hold off one of these one ones. Soon to be two twos. Maybe I was supposed to play the, the Lannery. Um, yeah, they just take it. Guess I could also yeah, I should have I should have Lannery attacked too, because I could play the Brontodon after combat. Didn't think about that. I could also abrade my own Resilient Kenra and force a chump block of the Glorybringer. Hmm. That could be good too. Cast out, geez. With not exactly enough mana to pump. I do have Bronted on, though. So I don't think this actually does anything. They're going to try to hit the Bronted on. Well, I'm just going to blow up the stop to arrest. And I don't want a Lannery. That can go to the graveyard. And a land. Well, I also really wanted to hit two things. Maybe I was supposed to guarantee hit two things and just leave it on top the first time and then mill it the next time. Because now I have a 3-2 that doesn't actually eat a servo. Though they do have to be a little worried about the crackback. Yeah, they're not even, not even attacking. So that's kind of cool. And I know the last card in their hand is Brontodon. Interesting. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to attack with I want to force a block. I'm definitely attacking with at least these two. Not exerting. Is it just going to... I guess I should exert? Yeah, I guess I actually should exert, right? Because I can just exert and then kill the chalet before... Uh, before blockers and keep my glory bringer around. Yeah. Are they they're gonna block this Jade Light Ranger? Probably. I can't imagine them not when the chalet is dying. But I kinda want to next turn yeah, next turn I'm gonna reanimate the Kenra and pump the Jade Light Ranger. I guess I'm gonna have a Lannery out, I can just pump that. Yeah, let's attack with that. And deal damage there. And get some manas. That's fine. Red, red, red. Abrade this thing. Oh, Abrade, you are so awkward. Now that dies. I imagine we'll see two trades here. I guess they have to block. <laughs> and now there are two. Play my last thing. And they definitely, I guess the Brontodon, this Brontodon is actually annoying. 
another chalet. That's pretty good. Um, now maybe I'm supposed to keep this, save this Kenra. So I can force a chump lock. Yeah, I think I have to save it. We'll just hold off here for one un minuto. But I still think I'm in really good shape here. They're going to have three, two, four, they have nine mana, so they can't double activate the chalet. And a land, and then a land or elf. So let's go to the graveyard with you. And just pass the turn. And just a land. Still can't double activate. Now they're on 10 mana, so too short. And are they? Yeah, now they're actually just dead. <laughs> Even if, they weren't. Yeah, they weren't dead that previous turn. Yeah, because they had three three blockers. But okay. Uh, I was a pretty big fan of how I sideboarded there. Maybe I want these struggles to have more answers to Chalet and um, the other thing. Brontodon? Because like 3-4 Brontodon was actually kind of annoying too. But I also just want to lower my curve on the draw. I have Glorybringer and Chandra and Fight with Fire to deal with Chalet. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just play the cheaper spell. Nine and a half minutes. Ooh, Terminal Lateral Assist game. Oh, happy day. I will keep... Oof. Do they have Lanor Elves? Yep. Turn one Lanor Elves, all three games. Pretty good. Okay, tap land. That's good, though. To a branch walker. They see the mill of the Thopter Arrest. Ooh, that's actually great. Um, hmm. I kind of want to spray the Lanor Elves, but I don't really want to trade Captain Lannery Storm for Branch Walker. And I can deal with the Elf next turn with Ballista. So I'm just going to Lannery attack and spray the Blocker. Sack for red, get my trigger, and hopefully they don't go too nuts this, this turn. Two one ones. That is fine. Got anything else? They do. Authority of the consoles. Well, I got my haste creature down first, so that's nice. This is going to be good against me, though. But I feel pretty far ahead. They're down to two cards, so like a tempo gain from this isn't going to be too severe. And they do. I'm perfectly fine trading here too. So yeah, let's just trade there. And play this walking ballista. And deal with their elf. We'll just play a long game. There are two cards in hand, three lands in play. It'll take me a while because I missed my third land drop, but we'll get there. Another Saproling Migration. This is going to get me 
I'm going to potentially get up to five creatures and three lands. That's pretty close to fight with fire range. And hopefully we'll hit another land off of this Jade Light Ranger. Definitely don't want that. Put it into the graveyard and got a land. I just drew a land. No reason to trade this Ballista. Can make that trade at any time. Oh wow, it's getting dark. Yeah, they're cycling looking for lands. You probably have like a SRAM's expertise or an angel in hand. Ooh, they don't even want to keep playing, but I was going to do so much cool stuff. Man, they just stopped me from having all my fun. I was going to play Rada, and the next turn I was probably going to kick fight with Fire finally. And that would have virtually ended the game. But even before then, you know, Authority of the Consoles is one of those cards that's pretty good when you have a lot of interaction. I don't think it's very good in a proactive deck like that. I mean, I get like I, I get that it's good against haste creatures, but it just doesn't seem like the right card. I mean, they just weren't able to really apply any pressure to that game. And my, I'm gonna win going long. That was my plan anyway. So they, they're really the aggro deck. Misassignment of role there, methinks, or just an overestimation of that card. But deck was pretty cool. Lionel Rells is a great card. Was happy to have it on turn one there. Um, just like. Efficient removal, and you, you just do so much mana worth of stuff. Like, Rada found me, a, made me a ton of mana, as did Captain Landry Storm. I was able to just get really far ahead on the early turns of the game, double spelling with the cheap removal. And that is something that I really like doing. So, uh, cool deck. Hope to see some more innovation in standard now that we have a real target. We, we sort of know the top tier of the metagame, so uh, you, can, you can brew with a direction in mind. And hopefully we'll see some cool stuff, because Dominaria is a great set. I'm uh, going to be doing a little bit more standard, I think. Uh, at least the next video will be standard. Might go back to modern, and we'll start mixing up. Hopefully see some modern in Dominaria, or Dominaria in modern as well. But hope you enjoyed this one, and you can come back and see me on Wednesday. Bye.